Sedges are a super interesting group of native plants that are way underutilized in the natural landscape. A while back, Shannon had a discussion with Sam Hoadley from the Mount Cuba Center about using sedges, particularly those in the genus Carex, in the natural landscape and pollinator garden. Let's listen in to how that discussion went. We should probably define Carexes. Do you want to do that or you want me to do it? Sure. I'd, I'd be happy to jump into that. So Carex are a really huge genus of grass-like plants that are in the family Cyperaceae. So they are commonly referred to as sedges, although there are other genera within the Cyperaceae that are also referred to as sedges. But within the sedge family or the Cyperaceae family, Carex is the largest genus. So Carex are a huge and very diverse group of plants. They can be found around the world. And in some ways, you know, they're incredibly diverse, both in the number of species that are out there. I think in the state of Delaware alone, we have 137 species native to Delaware, which is amazing. Um, there are hundreds of species native to North America, a couple of thousand species native worldwide. You can find them in habitats and environments that are tremendously diverse. There are carex that occur in alpine areas. There are carex that occur kind of where I would have thought about carex growing in kind of shady, wet areas. And there are carex that even grow on sand dunes on beaches. So there's this huge diversity of habitats. But in a very interesting way, carex are not very diverse at all. So they are all herbaceous perennials, which is very interesting when you think about large plant families like the poaceae, for example, so the grasses. You have annual grasses, you have perennial grasses that are cool season and warm season, and you even have woody grasses if you think about bamboo. But with carex, they are all cool season perennial plants, which is really, really interesting. All these thousands of species out there, they all have that in common. Um, but they are a tremendously diverse group of plants. There are, you know, small plants that want really dry soils. There are large plants that want really wet soils. There's really everything in between. So there really is a carex for every home garden situation that you can possibly imagine, which is really exciting. You know, this is a genus that can that can kind of do it all. Um, and I think about it as a really great problem solving group of plants in a garden situation. Right. And like we said at the beginning, it's one that we haven't looked at or thought about using as much in our gardens a lot of times. And they're really gorgeous too. I mean, some of these carexes have these amazing seed heads. That's what I always think of oh, yeah. when I think about the carexes are the seed heads that they can have. Absolutely. So even in our trials, when we were rating these plants, we were kind of rating them as a plant overall. We weren't really giving extra points to the blooms in particular or the fruit in particular. It was all just kind of folded into that overall score and it wasn't given kind of additional points for having beautiful flowers or beautiful fruit. But some of these carex, they are truly spectacular in flower and in fruit. The flowers in most carex tend to be pretty short-lived, but that display can be incredible. But then the fruit can last for a long period of time. We have Carex gray eye, Carex granita, some of the most beautiful fruit in the entire trials. They'll last all summer into fall, and they add a lot of texture to plantings in addition to all of what the foliage can provide. And I really think of Carex as kind of the backbone to your plantings, and it's not just shade. You know, they can, they can be planted, a lot of these species can be planted in sun, they can be planted in shade as well, and they really give you this opportunity to use a plant is kind of like a combining feature that you can use in both sun and shade that will kind of unify a design together. Yeah. I, anyways, you can tell I'm a little excited about Carex. They're great plants. Oh yeah. And I love hearing that too, because I've always tended to think about Carex and your sedges as being your wetland. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be swampy, swampy, but you have to have moist was kind of my thinking, even though I do find Carex is occasionally up in the dry open woods. They're little short things and they're cute little things, but right. they're not what I think of as sedges. Right. And so, yeah, when I was looking at the trial, I was like, yeah, wait a minute. And it was reminding me just how diverse sedges can be. There's just so many characters out there and showing people that diversity, showing people what they can accomplish with the single genus in their gardens. And with Carex, it's not about just planting one or two, like with hydrangea. It's about planting many. And you can incorporate many, many different Carex both in numbers of a single species or multiples of different species together and really create these beautiful dynamic plantings. And they really can carry a planting just through that texture and that presence. And a lot of them are more or less evergreen so that there's a presence in your garden. There's some interest for an extremely long period of time. And that's something that not a lot of other perennials in your home garden really can do. 
So how are some of the ways that you see using the sedges and the gardens and landscapes? Yeah, I think they're a really great companion plant. A couple of ways that I really like to use Carex at home, especially with things like Carex pensylvanica, is I love to use this as kind of the base layer of my plantings in a lot of situations. This is a species that's going to not get very overly tall, so it's not going to overwhelm other perennials that you might have in your garden, and it's going to kind of weave through the base of these other plants. And all throughout, um, while it's doing that, it's going to help retain moisture at the soil level. It's going to keep the roots cool of your other plants, and it's going to help suppress weeds. And it's also going to reduce the amount of maintenance as far as mulch applications that I'm going to have to do in my home garden. I like to kind of create these living matrixes with Carex, and they really do an excellent job at that. And it just gives you another dynamic layer to your garden. It makes things look more interesting. There's more depth. There's more texture. And you can accomplish this with many other Carex species, not just with Carex pensylvanica. And again, I mentioned that there's a lot of Carex that do really well in shade and sun. You can use that as kind of a unifying element to tie in those two different plantings together. If you have a sunny western exposure to your house and a northerly exposure to your house, you can use this single species to tie those two plantings together. And again, there's not a lot of other plants that can do that really successfully. And another really kind of unusual thing we were looking at with the Carex trial was looking at them as a possible lawn alternative. And there's many different Carex that you could use as a no-mow lawn. You're not actually having to maintain this very often. Maybe you mow it once in the spring and that might be all you need to do to it. But there's a lot of Carex, these low-growing plants, low-growing species with finer foliage that really look beautiful when mixed together. You can have multiple different species together mixed with other non-Carex to kind of create this beautiful low-growing meadow that is really dynamic, has a lot more wildlife value than a traditional turf grass lawn. But we also were looking at Carex and their ability to be mowed. And uh, several of these species actually handled mowing really, really well. In the last year of the evaluation, we mowed an example of each of the Carex, both in sun and shade, on a biweekly basis, so every two weeks starting in May, and all the way through August, we were mowing these plants at four inches. And what we found is a lot of the Carex tolerated it, but there was kind of a smaller group of plants that didn't just tolerate the treatment, they actually looked really, really good while doing that. So there is this kind of unusual niche that Carex could potentially fill as well in kind of this mowed lawn alternative. If you really like that mowed aesthetic, there are some Carex that can do that for you. And I think about Carex as also maybe potentially filling in some trouble areas as far as lawns are concerned. Dry shade is one of those that comes to mind a lot or planting in the root zones of say a maple. There are certain Carex that might be able to do that really, really well um, where turf grass lawns may not be able to quite, quite accomplish the aesthetic goals that you're going for in those types, types of situations. So I love Carex in naturalistic gardens, which is really kind of how I categorize my home landscape but they have so many other areas of potential as well. If you want to dive even deeper into the world of sedges, I will link the entire podcast this clip was taken from in the description. The sedges, along with the rushes, are often referred to as grass allies for good reason. The plants in all three of those families look much like each other. If you would like to learn some simple ways to separate the sedges, rushes, and grasses, you can learn how to by watching this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.